Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Anthony's Parish. Today is the third Sunday of Easter. Please join us in our entrance hymn, Blessed Be Your Name. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May you all be welcome, brothers and sisters, for this Mass on this third Sunday of Easter, We're still in the Easter time. And so there is this special note of joy. But of course, we take also into account all the miseries of this world. We pray especially for peace in the Middle East, in the Holy Land, where Jesus uh, lived as human 
where is life on this earth, and of course, all the other countries at war, especially Ukraine. The mass is offered today for Poland Riyadh. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the secret mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, You are Israelites, and it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has glorified his servant Jesus, the same Jesus you handed over and then disowned in the presence of Pilate, after Pilate had decided to release him. It was you who accused the Holy One, the Just One, you who demanded the reprieve of a murderer while you killed the Prince of Life. God, however, raised him from the dead, and to that fact we are the witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that neither you nor your leaders had any idea what you were really doing. This was the way God carried out what he had foretold when he said through all his prophets that his Christ would suffer now you must repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out the word of God lift up the light of your face on us O Lord When I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish you released me. Have mercy and hear me. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. It is the Lord who grants favors to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. What can bring us happiness, many say. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. I will lie down in peace and sleep comes at once. For you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. A reading from the letter, first letter of St. John. I'm writing this, my children, to so stop you sinning. But if anyone should sin, we have our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, who is just. He is a sacrifice that takes our sins away, and not only ours, but the whole world's. We can be sure that we know God only by keeping his commandments. Anyone who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, refusing to admit the truth. But when anyone does obey what he has said, God's love comes to perfection in him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The disciples told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized Jesus at the breaking of bread. They were still talking about this when Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. Their joy was so great that they could not believe it, and they stood dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. Then he told them, This is what I meant when I said, while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms has to be fulfilled. He then opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, So you see how it is written that the Christ would suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that in his name Repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to this. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, the Gospel gives us two great signs for the resurrection, which is at the core of our faith. The witnesses of the apostles, of the first Christians, and the understanding, the full understanding of the scriptures. As it is said at the end of this uh, Gospel, you witnesses to this and we see how it was not so easy for them and just Jesus multiplied signs to show them that he is really risen from the dead he ate with them took fish and so forth and is the doubts uh, emerge at first and it's slowly and the joy comes in and they are witnesses giving even their life do remember, brothers and sisters, that for three centuries it was illegal to be a Christian and you could face death penalty. Especially when there were problems in the society, the scapegoats would be Christians and they would be put to death. Hence, the high number of martyrs in the three first centuries ending with the rise to power of Emperor Constantine. Don't forget, by the way, that our Roman Catholic Church in England was also founded on the martyrs of 105 young priests. And as you know, they went in France at Douai because it was forbidden to be a priest in England at the time the time of Elizabeth I especially. 
and there they would be trained to become, they were seminarians, so young, uh, young, uh, uh, young people, and they were ordained. And they did a vow, and the vow was to go back in their beloved country, England. And so they did. And many were put to death at Tyburn. Do you know where is Tyburn? Tyburn Gallows. I went to Tyburn on a little personal pilgrimage. Today, for those that don't know very well where Tyburn is, Tyburn, today, it's Marble Arch. You all know Marble Arch, although it's covered because they are under repair. So 105 young priests in between 1535 and 1681. 1681 is not so, well, no, I know it's far away, it's not so much. It's on that, that our faith in the resurrection of Christ and our faith as Christians is rooted. We must always remember that. Now, the second sign that is given to us are the scriptures, meaning, of course, what we call the Old Testament. Now, in the early church, there, there were some uh, arguments, uh, disputes, should we keep the Old Testament? Now, it's true that when you read the Old Testament, it's full of violence, let's face it. It's very violent, the, the Old Testament. And it's not always full of Christian sentiments and feelings. And even in a modern day and age, you know, in the 19th century, Catholics were not allowed to read the Old Testament. That is why they know it so badly. Protestants knew much better the Old Testament. But it's not, uh, it's not good, because it, it is the word of God. And the word of God cannot be abolished. It's Jesus that says that. So what is the question with the Old Testament? It's how do we interpret the Old Testament? Do we take it as the final point? So OK, eye for eye and, and teeth for teeth, which was an improvement at the time. But it's not today at all for Christians. We go much further. We love our neighbor and our enemies. So you see, there is a, a development inside the, the Bible from the Old to the New Testament. Now, what does give the meaning to it? Well, it's very, very simple. Very simple, brothers and sisters. You have all seen a seed, okay, of a, let's say, horse chestnut tree, okay? or a beech, or whatever you want, an oak. If you prefer an oak, let's take an oak. You've seen, it's very small. When you look at it, you don't understand where the tree is going to be. You, you see, you see, that's all. But when you see the tree, you understand it came from the seed. So important in education. When you are very young, which is a privilege in many ways, <laughs> especially for be in the choir and when the choir has got a good lunch after mass that uh, makes it very strong and uh, it's good you help us to pray I assure you but uh, you, you are not yet grown-ups you've got all an education that is going to one day I don't know maybe some will be priests or the one will be brothers or sisters or the one will be in the army or the one will be judges or whatever uh, they will work uh, in a factory or whatever in farming see and it is in view of this vocation of yours that is all your education so it's a final point that shows what your life has been when you are faced to God there you look backward and you say Lord I offer my life as it is not always perfect far from it you know it you know it better than I do and it's the same with the Bible it's the New Testament that gives the meaning of the old it is Jesus that gives the full meaning to all the scriptures and that's what he says 
in the Gospel of today, when he says, open their minds to understand the scriptures. And do remember what Jesus says to the disciple of Emmaus, when they are walking, you know, and they are sad, so sad, because they have no more hope. Hope, it's given by the scriptures. But you see all the different events, and the end of it is Christ. And Christ gives the meaning to everything else. And it is uh, uh, what it is said to the disciples of uh, Emmaus when Jesus opens their mind to understand the scriptures and to understand all that in the scriptures refer to him. Jonas, Jonas, it's the death and resurrection of Christ, which is announced through the little story of Jonas who is thrown into the sea and swallowed by the big fish and so forth. And it's the way that all the fathers of the church have understood the scriptures. And you see it in all the paintings of the medieval times. When you go in a cathedral, when you look at the stained glass windows, you look at the tapestries of La Chaise Dieu in the 16th century, you look and you see this correspondence in between the Old and the New Testament. And the Old Testament being like a prophecy of Jesus who is to come. And Jesus gives us the last seal of the scriptures. It is expressed very often in cathedrals. You see two women, one of it a veil, because the understanding of the Bible is not yet totally given, and the other one with no veil, because Jesus has opened their eyes. And there is faith, there is hope, there is charity, and it's this which is the treasure of our faith. So, brothers and sisters, let us always understand the word of God in that way. The final word is Jesus. The final word is the resurrection of Christ, in which we believe, in which we have our joy. Amen. This faith which we have in the resurrection of Christ, in Jesus risen from the dead, we express it in the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the joy of Easter enriching every aspect of reality, we turn to the one who saves us, 
May he hear our wants and needs and guide us to his will. Let us pray for the church. May we welcome all those who seek the truth and call the world to repent and believe in the saving news of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those in the world who are affected by war, violence, and oppression. May their cries for peace not only be heard as the words of victims and their allies, but the message of God. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for those who are struggling with their faith in Christ and for those who do not believe in him at all. May their eyes be open to see God moving in their life every day, drawing them into a relationship with him. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our parish community. Let us be kind to each other and to all those around us, remembering that we are all made in the image of God and called to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those who have died recently throughout the world. We also pray for the church expectant in purgatory. May they all see the face of God soon. Lord, in your mercy. Let us take a moment of silence to pray to the Lord our God. Lord, in your mercy. We call on Mary, the mother of God, to intercede for us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, the Lord is, with is with thee. Blessed, blessed are thou amongst women, and, and blessed is the fruit, fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear these petitions that we lay at your feet, if they be pleasing to your will, bless and approve them. We ask this to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please sing with us our offertory hymn as I kneel. <coughs>
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to load you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Anthony, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for feeling help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Alan our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Paul And to all who are pleasing to you and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the word all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Take and peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. 
who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Brothers and sisters, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Should I turn the roof? But when they say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
communion him is one bread, one blood.
Just let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain, attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Uh, there are just a few announcements, not many, so you may be seated. So the first announcement is that you've got everything in the newsletter. So please take it. It's been printed for you. And like this, you know everything about this week. You will notice, for instance, that there are two requiem mass, uh, which are uh, at 10 o'clock. So that means there is the usual mass, but which is uh, first a requiem mass. You will notice also that next Sunday, it is the word day of prayer for vocations. So that's very important. We need vocations in the church. We need vocations in our community. We need vocations in as diocese priests also. So please pray for that. As you are with the community, that means you pray double time. One for the diocese priest and one for us for our community. And uh, there are other things I saw which you will discover. Uh, the next baptism preparation course, well, it will be in May, so, so you have time to reflect on that. And uh, I, oh yes, our provincial, uh, Father Ignaz Maria, is coming for a few days to visit us and also to visit St. Patrick where Father Philip Thomas is uh, in the Diocese of Westminster. So pray for that. He comes, uh, well, he comes to really visit St. Patrick and know this parish church which is in Soho and where our brother is involved very much. But he will be staying at the Priory so pray for him. The provincial is in charge of the community for all uh, European priorities we have. So now you may stand and I will give you the solemn blessing uh, for Easter time. So at each invocation you as you know, you, you answer Amen or Amen. The Lord be with you. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and of the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go forth, Mass is ended. <laughs>